Hello, good evening and once again welcome to In The Know brought to you by The Racing Post and Coral. It's Friday night and we've got Ascot and Haydock to look forward to a potential national hunt bonanza uh, on Saturday afternoon once again. We've seen some very impressive horses uh, midweek uh, and we might well see some very impressive horses uh, at the weekend as well with, as it currently stands on Saturday, nine previous Grade 1 winners uh, who could well be going to post over the, uh, at the course of those two cards. Uh, although, uh, with uh, rumours on social media and uh, the, the ground conditions of various other things, uh, we'll uh, cross our fingers and hope that we get one or two uh, by the way things are working out. But if all goes to plan and everything works out, uh, we should have a, uh, an interesting coral hurdle, a, a fascinating Betfair chase and plenty of other uh, races as well with plenty of, uh, like I said, uh, grade one action uh, coming through with the likes of Constitution Hill, L'Empresse, of course, uh, Aplutard. It could be, fingers crossed, it could be a cracking Saturday afternoon of racing. But uh, this is the national hunt season these days, uh, so uh, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, but uh, uh, as ever, our panel will probably be looking for value uh, in the bigger fields, in the handicaps as well, and hoping to get some nice price winners. Uh, so uh, you don't have to worry uh, about uh, uh, getting too overexcited and then being let down tomorrow. There'll still be something to get stuck into, that's for sure. This is live and interactive, of course, so uh, like and subscribe if you haven't already, if you're watching on YouTube, and get your uh, selections and thoughts and feelings in on that live chat. Uh, and uh, also uh, let us know what you are backing in those races tomorrow, and hopefully we'll try and read them out. We should have time tonight. There's uh, not uh, not too many uh, runners going to post as it stands, like I said. So, uh, But uh, with plenty of action to, to get stuck into, uh, let's uh, introduce our panel uh, for the evening and uh, ready and raring to go uh, to court, apparently, uh, given how he's, uh, he's dressed up tonight. <laughs> it's, uh, it's Mr Paul Keeley making an effort. Look at yeah, this. Yeah, I've got to rush off. Important, important engagement. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, it was a good job. We've got ten races to get through, but um, given the number of runners, we'll have half out spare, won't we? We will, yeah, yeah. But no, off to a wedding reception later on. So. Well, you look fantastic. Thank you very much. Not sure about the... You can't see the, the shorts underneath. Oh, well, no. No, no, no. From here up. That's it. Wonderful. Uh, Paul Keeley, then. there you go, making an effort for uh, for Friday night. Uh, Tom Siegel as well. I'm uh, fully expecting to uh, to beam into Siegel Towers and see him uh, in uh, top hat and tails. Let's have a look. No, same old <laughs> same old golf t-shirt and, and and sweater. Unfortunately, Ross. That's all right, Tom. Never change, mate. Never change. It's uh, it's what's up here that we're we're we're, uh, we're uh, interested exactly. in. Exactly. Not much these days, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, yeah, fingers crossed. We. Um, be nice if they all turn up tomorrow. Yeah, I went to Ascot today. Uh, didn't seem excessively fast, but it, obviously the trainers don't agree with me. It was like Cheltenham last week, wasn't it? I mean, the actual times didn't suggest it was anywhere near as fast as everyone was telling me it was, and they all pulled them out there as well. So I don't get it. I don't get. I don't. I don't understand. It seems to me that they they just decide whether it's too quick or not, and then pull their horses out if it's too you know whatever they think without actually looking at the facts. But there we go. We'll see what happens. We will, and uh, I'm sure you'll have a few uh, winners up your sleeve, uh, regardless of who turns up. Uh, David Stevens uh, is uh, is looking forward to a, another big Saturday as well. Good evening to you. Good evening, Ross. Good evening, gents. Yeah, I mean, anyone that was, well, caught in any of the rain we've had over the last few days will find it incredible to think that Chris Dickles is having to water at Ascot tonight, but such is the the dry year that he's had there. But let's let's suspend all of that just for this next hour and assume that all these horses are going to run because, for a start, a lot of these enhanced specials that the, the Coral Traders have provided tonight all feature horses whose participation is currently in doubt. So let's hope that's not the case. And three Grade 1 winners from last year's Cheltenham Festival set to line at Ascot tomorrow. So it should be an absolute cracker, of course. And the Coral Hurdle, an important race for us. Yeah, I, uh, I made a list, by the way. There, there, uh, from what I can see, there are nine previous Grade 1 winners to, to in tomorrow. If you, uh, if you can name them all, you, um, you get, uh, oh, I don't know, uh, a glass of champagne at the, uh, the wedding reception with, uh, with Keels tonight, <laughs> potentially. But uh, good evening to, uh, to Peter's punts, to Darren Walker, Neil Duggan, uh, Darren Weldon, Steve is 99, and plenty more uh, on the, uh, the chat at home. Before we move on to the, uh, the first race, uh, David, just a shout out. We mentioned last week the launch of the Coral Racing Club, and oh, it almost started perfectly, didn't it, yesterday? Yeah, I made the trip up to a very soggy Newcastle, but conditions relented just in time for the race time, uh, for the for the off of the race. It was the opening race here yesterday. This is the Rebecca Menzies trained Lady Mendoza, uh, and we were genuinely absolutely thrilled with her run. First time running for us. She was beaten by the odds on favour at a horse with, with much more experience, trained by Michael Scudamore. She showed a lovely attitude. I don't know if the guys saw it, but she was headed after the, the, the last hurdle 
for second place, but fought back to reclaim second. So she's got a lovely attitude. Uh, five lucky owners for the day, all picked up, I think, 360 quid plus change for prize money. And this is all, of course, completely free to join the Coral Racing Club. So Lady Mendotha, lots to look forward with her. And a week Sunday up at Carlisle, Annie Mack should be making her reappearance. So do get involved if you're not already. Okay. Sending you off to Newcastle and to Carlisle, David. Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> well, it's like you'll be getting your own um, travel log on Netflix soon. Uh, so uh, look forward to that. Uh, Ascot and Haydock then, let's uh, let's get involved. Uh, like I said, uh, smallish fields uh, as it currently stands. I think we will go to post. Four uh, go to post that far the, the opener at Ascot tomorrow. Uh, and it is a tight betting heat where uh, Scarface uh, is uh, five to four favourite. Are you wise to that? Is nine to four. Gunnery Officer uh, is three to one. Ivaldi. Is uh, is fifteen to two, uh, almost uh, four seasons. But we do have four horses uh, for this uh, this opener at uh, at Ascot. Uh, I'm going to come to you first, uh, Mr. Keeley, because um, mm. this looks an open uh, open contest. Obviously, we know what David Stevens is going to uh, going to be on uh, on side with. Big Scarface fan, as uh, as we know. Uh, are you wise to that? Is uh, has been back though. I thought Gunnery Officer was a little bit big, and even Evaldi from a yard who've won this quite a few times in the past ten years. This yeah, is a trappy heat. I mean, you could make little cases of most. I think is, you, I think you can argue that Scarface has got easily the best form at the moment, but we know he's nothing special because this is his second season over hurdles. He had quite a few goes last year, didn't he? Mm -hmm. uh, you could also say that are you wise to that's bumper form last year was slightly superior than Scarface's bumper form, and he did win easily last time. He was incredibly novice with the old jumping though, and you think you'd like to think he'd have to be uh, a little bit better in that. Uh, in that department, uh, gunnery officer comes from the points. I don't, I'm not 100 percent sure about. It. I'm thought he had to work hard enough to do what he did last time. Uh, I just about favour Scarface. Not a race I'm going to be getting involved in though. Yeah. Okay. Uh, he's a, a five to a five to four shot for for Joe Tizard and Tom Cannon. Yard in form. Uh, jockey's had an excellent couple of seasons as well. Uh, but there has been money for all you wise to that. Uh, and uh, and Tom, is this a again? It's a, Unless you, unless you really want to take on the favourite, of course, this um, it's a trappy little heat. Yeah, I'm just surprised we haven't had 17 uh, puns about Scarface yet, Ross. I was expecting at least 12. <laughs> I had my spread at about 12, and we've had none so far. It's a, it's a, fa it's a family show, mate. There's not a lot I can make <laughs> puns about, really, is it? <laughs> moderate effort from you so far. Uh, I would say I will not even be watching this race, to be perfectly honest. Uh, what, 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 where's there to go? I mean, Scarface is the best form. Are you wide to that? It's got got uh, got potential. Gunnery officer was well backed. That's the only thing I would say. He was very well backed. He halved in price when he won last time. And Ivaldi looks to have to a bit a bit to improve on what he showed last time. I personally think like Keels. I think Scarface get got the best form. The other two have got potential. Uh, not big enough prices for me to get involved. Okay, there you go. And uh, Scarface representing the uh, the Tizard team, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Stevens. Um, feel free to to bless us with some Scarface puns. You'd be surprised. It's actually it's pretty hard. I'm try I'm desperate. I'm trying. I'm desperately trying. I don't know if um, Pacino's running at Wolverhampton. I don't know on the uh, the evening we can double it up with. But either way, we're all a bit too big, aren't we, to be little friends? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And I did. I, I mean. I, it's not saying say hello to my little friend on this show. I think we're going to be in trouble, aren't we? So, um, but, uh, uh, tell us about the opener, David. It's not really a lot that Tony Montana said that is suitable for a family show, is there? So, <laughs> exactly. Um, I just I was reading back the the Joe Tizard blog. I didn't actually speak to Joe today, but obviously one of my colleagues did. It's yeah, it's funny. I mean, he wasn't overly confident. I mean, he was he was confident enough, I suppose. Look, the form is in the book, but there's a couple of. Uh, possible improvers in there against him. I thought even Ivaldi, actually, given that we would expect him to improve for his first run for Paul Nichols, can't be ruled out. I, look, I'm just echoing what the others have said. Scarface has the best form in the book. Is he a five to, you know, would you want to back him at five to four? I don't know. Really difficult one to kick off with, which doesn't say much, given this is probably the only race where all four are going to line up. But uh, I just very quickly, because I don't know what's going to win this first race, I'll just stick up the first price boost of the evening and the horse might still be in the race by the end of the show and it is Edward Stone one of those grade one winners from the Cheltenham Festival to win the 315 we were five to two we're going to be 130 for the duration of the show at least up to 20 quid okay there you go Edward Stone to win the 315 at Ascot 130 out from five to two uh, waiting on a price for Edward Stone to run in the 315 at Ascot uh, as a price boost. We'll see that uh, a little bit uh, later on. Moving on to the second race on the uh, the Ascot card then, a, a three-mile novices uh, uh, handicap chase here uh, where we've got five uh, going to post and our first previous Grade 1 winner. 
of the uh, of the day, of course. Uh, Milan Bridge, 11 to 8. Arizona Cardinal, 2 to 1. Kel Destan, 2 to 1. Uh, Coral finale winner uh, several years ago now as a four year old. Uh, it's 40 to 1. Uh, after eeny, meeny, miny, mo, I guess. I, if my brain went a bit there for trying to read that out. And then, and then, and then, and then, and It's 40 to 1. And one for you is 50 to 1 here. Uh, yeah, uh, Kel Destin coming off the back of a, a 685 day absence. Uh, Arizona Cardinal was impressive last time out. Milan Bridge looks very much a chaser in the making, Tom. Yeah, he's, you know, two Paul Nichols is, and is Kel, is he going to, if the ground quickens up, is he really going to run Kel Destin on? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I like Arizona Cardinal anyway. I, I thought he was impressive the other day. He stays well. He ran really well in the, uh, what's that race at Sandown? The EBF final. Uh, I'm a big fan of Stuart Edmonds as a, as a trainer. I think he's he's one of the sort of goes under the radar massively. Uh, I just thought he, he he was the one I fancied a bit. Nichols also didn't run great at Ascot today, but that's, that doesn't mean anything. And uh, well, Mill Ambridge is obvious danger, uh, but for me, it's all about Arizona Cardinal. I think he stays really well, and I think he'll be suited by conditions too. Yeah, I think yeah. it's, they can't really fancy the bottom two either. So it's a three horse race, and uh, I, I, I'd go for Arizona Cardinal at those prices. Yeah, Arizona Cardinal. Stuart Edmonds, of course, going to be officer in the first, Arizona Cardinal in the second. It'd be a nice uh, nice double for the yard if uh, if those two uh, went in. But Milan Bridge has been well backed. Yeah, it has been well backed. You know, when I was looking at this race, I thought, well, the, you know, the the absence of Kel Destan, who seems like he's been around for ages, and despite the 685 days off, still only seven. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he, you know, I was looking, I thought, well, hang on a minute. He was a horse that was rated 155 the last time he ran. He's been dropped to a mark of about 143. I know it's his chase debut, but it's also a limited handicap. So everything else is miles out of the weights as well. Mm. Like, you know, I mean, I think it should be just 10 pounds, 10, 10 stone 7, uh, Milan Bridge, 10 stone 6, Arizona Cardinal. So he's actually lobbed in if he's got anything left. Now, I, I did have a quick look at the nickel stable toys. He's done loads of work, three counters a day, etc., for ages to get him ready. And I think, you know, he, he did win plenty of races on good round early in his career. He just became slower and wanted a trip so you know when he was running at two miles he needed every ground um would i back a horse at two to one after two years off not really um but i'm interested to see how he goes um so he'd be the uh, he'd, he'd be the token uh, suggestion okay just looking back 2019 at haydock he did beat capone into second so um there's some connections <laughs> with the scarface in the opener but uh, and i don't know what the uh, i don't know what the record of paul nichols chases uh, off the back of uh, placed efforts on the fibre sand at Suttle are, uh, but uh, it's yeah. There's a lot of a lot of interesting quirks with Kelter Sen coming off the back of a break. But uh, Arizona Cardinal for Tom, uh, and you know, you know yeah. what? Yeah, I'm in an iron, but Kelter Sen. Okay, David Stevens, what do you got? Yeah, very similar to the first race, really, in that small field, but but trappy. Obviously, cases can be made for the first three in the betting. Uh, with Tom, like Tom, I would side on the Stuart Edmonds runner. Could be a big afternoon for Stuart. He's obviously got gunnery officer in the first as well as Arizona Cardinal. But like Kiel's looking forward to seeing how Cal Destan gets on. And, and look, you know Paul Nichols will have him as straight as he possibly can. He'll do himself justice, I'm sure. Class act on the day. Just hoping, though, that uh, Finn Lambert, who I must confess I don't know too much about, but he does take the £7 off Arizona Cardinal, which kind of you know negates the fact he's out of the handicap to a degree. He, uh, he rode a winner today. Three rides, one win and two places uh, for, uh, for this afternoon uh, at, uh, at Chepstow in Lambert. So uh, he goes into that ride with uh, plenty of confidence for sure at Ascot in that 12.55. Uh, next up, we are on to the 1.30 at Ascot. Uh, we're going to go through the Ascot uh, runners uh, and then go over to Haydock for the, uh, the, uh, the three races we're going to be looking at a little bit later on. Uh, next up at Ascot, it's a mare's handicap hurdle over just shy of three miles, uh, which is... Um, uh, well, about a mile short of what Glimpse of Garland needs based on that uh, that run last time out. But 9-4 to four favourite for Charlie Longsden and Bradley Roberts. Uh, Kelly Co is 3-1. to one. Terracita is 7-2. to two. Victoria's Peak 4-1. to one. Shantu Sunset 10s. Uh, New Yard, but uh, did well in this last uh, year. Midnight Reflection at 14-1 to one is the outsider of the bunch, but is becoming very well handicapped. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if you uh, you're a Racing Post members club, uh, member, you go back and watch the replay of Glimpse and Gala uh, last time out and uh, ask yourself as they turn into the home straight how the horse got beat three quarters of a length. Um, I'm not entirely sure the Ascot's going to suit the horse if he gets that far behind uh, Keels. Well, no, exactly, exactly. And she, sorry, yeah, of course. Yeah, and, you know, with ground quicking up, I thought Tennessee was a big price. Uh, she's obviously, she won three of her seven last year, but she won first time out as well. 
Uh, she closed with a, a very impressive win at Kempton. I mean, she beat an odds on favourite there, but she sort of skipped clear on, on what was pretty fast ground at Kempton. So I don't think that'll be any issue to her at all. Depends on how fit she is, but um, yeah, I think she's got a, a good shot at this race. Okay, yeah, she uh, seven to two from a, a from a yard who I like, and a, and a jockey's riding mm. incredibly well at the moment. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, there's you know there's, there's plenty there's plenty to go for there. It is a tight little it is a tight little heat, but I just thought he was, you know, at a surprisingly big price. Okay, I right. thought I'd be nearly, I thought she'd be nearly fab. Okay, Teresita, yeah, seven to two now, a little bit weak in the uh, the market. Um, I kind of went through a form though, and I thought oh, potentially unexposed, but I couldn't quite make head and a tail of it. But that's kind of this. This race mayor's is handicaps at the lowest level for you, though, isn't it? Like, yeah. You know what I mean? All 120s and 115s. We well, you start know. to think, oh, that's, oh, I'm not so sure about yeah. Oh, that's been beaten. And you, mm. you just kind of go around in circles. With, yeah. Which, I mean, Kakelico's got ability, but doesn't jump particularly well. Like I said, Glimpse of Gala's going to get behind. Teresita might not be very well handicapped. Um, and he uh, we talked about Finn Lambert. He had a winner for Nigel Twist and Davies mm. today. Maybe Victoria's Peak's got a chance. Chantu Sunset ran well in this last year, Tom. Uh, I thought this was tough. Yeah, really hard. Really hard. As you say about Glimpse of Gala, I could see her getting well behind uh, if the ground stays there, as it is. I mean, for at nine to four, that, that looks plenty short enough for me. Uh, I like Teresita, like Keel said. I thought Coquico might find the ground a bit quick too. Her best form's on softer ground. Victoria's Peak's quite interesting. She's in good form, isn't she? And uh, I know it was only a, a two-runner race the last time, and she was up against a horse that was miles better better than her Sebastopol, but she ran all right for a long way. Uh I'd have it between three and four to Ter Terracita and Victoria's Peak, but once again, it's one of those trappy races. Just the only thing I could say, I'd be against a favourite. That's the one. That's the, that's that's the the angle I've got in here. So maybe it makes it a more interesting betting race yeah. than it would appear at first glance. But trying to find the one to take advantage is not easy. Yeah, I wouldn't entirely rely on Sean Two Sunset. I mean, it was oh. it was third in this race last year, off a mark of 107, sent off 100 to 30. It's gone to Tim Vaughan, who's um, had uh, quite a good season, really quietly. Uh, and uh, he's had a couple of placed efforts from runners on its last couple of starts. I, I, I thought if it was 130 last year, I'm not sure why it's, why she's 10 to 1 this year. Oh, it's, I mean, it's got to be the yards, which hasn't it? But I feel like yeah, Phyllis well, Potts so if she stays, she won't mind the ground. So yeah, I, I can see where you're coming. Yeah, from. Listen, from listen, Yards, which is a you know can be a good angle, can't you? If you remember Koshari at uh, Aintree last year, one about eighty to one or sixty-six to one or whatever, having switched from Willie Mullins, mm. when would have been fab probably if he'd been in the same yard. So yeah, yeah. People the make the kind of upgrades yeah. and downgrade judgments, yeah, but you never know what's going yeah, on. Yeah, therefore, it must be useless because it's gone somewhere else. Yes, yeah. lower profile trainer, etc. Uh, David Stephens, uh, the the mayor's handicap hurdle. Uh, do you have a, a stronger opinion? I wouldn't say stronger than the first two races, but again, want to take on the favourite here. And I thought, not knowing much about Finn Lambert, I'm hoping that he's in for a very big afternoon because I came down on the side of Victoria's Peak, won easily enough up at Hexham first start for Nigel Twist and Davis, and then went chasing, as Tom said, against Sebastopol at Chep. So back in a little bit calmer waters and back over hurdles today. As I say, hoping Victoria's Peak can uh, can give Finn Lambert a very good afternoon. Okay, Victoria's Peak is a four to one shot for this man's handicap hurdle. Anyone uh, strong midnight reflection second in the race last year, well handicapped uh, in at fourteen. Says All Sports fan Adam, uh, and um, that is it. <laughs> there we go for this race at Ascot. Uh, just reiterate the selections, Keels. Uh, yeah, Terracita for me. Terracita. I'll take a small chance. Shantu Sunset at ten to one. Tom. Uh, I think Teresita's got a good chance too. Okay, David. Victoria's Peak. There you go. Well, that's the the first three races that Ascot rattled through then, uh, and we're on to our first potential. Is it? Is it not? Are we going to have it? Is it going to be what kind of race? Is it going to be a five runner race? Could it be a yeah. two runner race? Could easily be a two runner race. It could easily be a two runner race. Do your job, ran today. Uh, Long press a might come out. Hitman will be off to to hey. Haydock. Uh, which means Cool Cody will make all and beat St Calvados. But uh, Lon Perez says one to two as it currently stands here uh, for this uh, this Grade Two chase. Uh, Hitman is five to two, but um, his uh, his first preference is at uh, at Haydock. And all things uh, being well, he will most likely go uh, up there. St Calvados, uh, who has last seen him winning form, uh, like uh, uh, one of his stable mates, has switched to the uh, the David. Uh, Maxwell owner and uh, jockey ship. Uh, Call Cody, I only saw him pulling up seven days ago as well, and do your job was heavily beaten. It's, yeah, it's a tough one. I mean, in theory, Tom, obviously, it's a very exciting return to the track for Lompresse, who um, just dominated every single race that he uh, he ran in last season. 
uh, and uh, hopefully you can uh, you can continue that potentially to a, a crack at a, uh, a Gold Cup or a or a bowl at Aintree or something similar to that. But of course, ground conditions and the yard. Every single one of their runners have been turning to the home straight and going out like a light. So there is back in my uh, back in the uh, in the brain box there a worry whether he might need this first run. Absolutely, 210 days since Venetia had a winner over over jumps. <coughs> uh, as you say, they've all been they've all run well to a point. Look, I hate doing things like this because the very next time, every time you say but Sable hasn't had a winner, they have a winner the next day. So you just don't know when it's going to change. Could easily be with Lon Presse. I wanted to take him on though, uh, on this sort of under this ground. I still think he's better left-handed. I know he won at Sandown, but and Exeter, but. But uh, I still think he, he, his best performance was by miles at Chester. Uh, Chester at Cheltenham. He'd do well to win round <laughs> Chester. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'd love uh, to see it, though. Uh, I'd love to see it. <laughs> be good. I'll tell you what, they should put jumps around Chester. Oh, Wouldn't that be yeah. fun? He'd, uh, he'd, he'd win the Chester Cup. I mean, Venetia's gone. Has she won it before? Has she gone? Because she won Green Book, innit? No, she won, she, he won, she the, won the Consolation, didn't he? Consolation. Ah, yeah, he won course. the Consolation. Yeah, he probably would win the Chester Cup. So I wanted to take him on anyway. Obviously, Hitman's not going to run, but I think St. Calvados is a big price for 32. Remember, the King, last couple of King George's on his on his seasonal reappearance, he's cantered into the race. I mean, and, and run really well. I know he's got to give a bit of weight away, but, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if Nichols has him, has him right ready for this. He'll get a good lead into the race from Paul Cody. If Lon Press isn't, isn't on his game, I see St. Calvados. I can't believe he's 13 to 2. I thought that was a really big price, really, because do your job, excuse me, isn't going to run, and nor is Hitman. So that's the problem, isn't it? You can't have a bet because they're going to come out, and therefore what price are you going to get? But uh, if, if they, if uh, you know, take those two out, what, he's a 3 to 1 shot, something like that, I thought that was perfectly fair for a horse that's got his grade 1 form. He should have won the Brian Air that year, went against... Uh, Aplu, he split, didn't he? Aplu, Tard, and Duvan, and he should have won. He got, he was unlucky. He got hampered at the last. That's that's the quality of horse we're talking about. Uh, I think he can beat Long Press tomorrow. Mm. That was a long time ago, mine, but um, lost in translation. Yeah, he ran well into King George, though, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but um, yeah, he's just he's, he's he'll always be whatever happens. He's always going to be a what could have been horse, couldn't he, St Calvados? Yeah, yes, but he's, but he's talented. And the thing about this, I know Tom's saying you can't really back him. Well, he can back him because Wolf Orton works massively, massively yeah. in favour of punters uh, and not bookmakers. And I'm sure Dave will hate me for saying this, but I mean, it just, you know what I mean? If Long Press and Hitman get taken out, then he's a massive, massive odds on shot and you'll get a much better price now than, than then. And I'll give you an example. Last week, Nubi Negro, if you back Nubi Negro at five to four uh, um, before Edward Stone came out, you got paid out at one to two and he went off at one to ten. Yeah. Uh, you know, so was that know. before they both came out? Yes, yes. Sizey Potsy came out as well. Uh, not Sizey Potsy. Sizey mm. Potsy wins at Haydock tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> was that in it? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah it was, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, of course. It's in a novice hurdle, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, he came out of it. He's got a great chance tomorrow, by the way. But anyway, um, yeah. So if you want to, if you want to take the price of some to take it now because you, you're going to you, you'll end up with better than what you would have. Obviously, you know, it, it, you still got to beat Long Press. We keep going on about the Venetia Williams form. She had two more seconds today. That's nine out of the 20, last 27 runners in November. They can't, they're not all running badly. No, they're all running really they're well, but like, literally you know, up you know, to a point. Looking like a, a gallop short, but you know, yeah. the further you get into the season, we keep saying, oh, they look like they need it. And then they've had that gallop, haven't they? You know what yeah. I mean? And they're getting yeah, there. Fair. Some of these horses are going to be more ready than others. Um, you know, the other thing about this is it's just one of these, this, one, you know, one of these boring cases of a really, really good horse trying to pick its way the easiest way to Cheltenham as possible. We're going to have it all season. We've got it coming up in the next race as well, where we've got fairly meaningless races going on until we get to Cheltenham. I don't like that. It's boring. I mean, you should be running in the King George or the Betfair Chase, not running in this thing. But uh, you know, that's where we are with racing at the moment, isn't it? I suppose. Uh, but I mean, yeah, he's still running. He's not. Is he, is he in the king? He's not entered. Is he in the king? Uh, I think. He, I think he got entered, but they did say it wasn't in plans. Because right. this, in theory, it's a lovely prep for. You know, well, yeah, exactly. Five yeah. weeks away. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you don't mind if that's a prep for for a big race, but there was talk about you know missing that and just you know. Yeah. Pop. I think you're harsh on Venetia kills. Venetia often no, I mean, runs it's every, it's every, yeah, but, you know, No, it's just a case of everybody does it these days. I mean, yeah. I mean it's not just. Pick. She I'm not just. She's I'm not, no, she's talking running. No, she doesn't she's always, but she's top two in the Hennessy, isn't she? In the Coral Gold Cup, I nearly said it. Doesn't I nearly always. Said it, David, well, you actually sorry. did. You actually did say it. But, uh, 
<laughs> but uh, but uh, you, you know, I mean, it's just a, it, it, it's just a it's just a point that we now you know year in year out we have horses that are very very good and because there's so many opportunities we just see small fields, no real opposition, and that's what we're getting again. Yeah. David, <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Are we at Chester with sizing poxy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, look, Kills is absolutely right about the rule four. By the way, I think look, any half decent punter would know that that, that the rule four is very much in their favour, not ours. Um, <laughs> let's hope Long Presse lines up. He's a class act, obviously. He's still in the King George, by the way. Um, he's only a seven to one shot. So, I, have they actually ruled out? I'm not sure. Just moving on to the King George very briefly. Big gamble on Gallop under Champ today. So whether Willie Mullins uh, is thinking seriously of sending that one over, that would obviously be great if he did. But anyway, back to this race. I'm with Tom, St. Calvados, class act on his day. David Maxwell in the plate for the first time, but he's perfectly good enough to get the job done against what could only be, what, one, maybe two rivals. OK. Uh, yeah, let's let's not play the what's Willie Mullins going to do with his runners game because, I mean, <laughs> we'll be here all, we're, we're here all year. Uh, quite frankly, uh, but uh, okay. Hopefully, we'll have uh, Lon Presse uh, returning to the track with an impressive win, or alternatively, them all coming out and us all getting a nice price on St Calvados, uh, only to see Cool Cody make all the running and St Calvados not go past. Uh, but uh, we'll potentially, like I said, an interesting race uh, tomorrow at uh, Ascot. Uh, fingers crossed. Also, a very interesting coral hurdle. Uh, after this, uh, the, the 240 contest with uh, five of them currently lining up. Although, uh, obviously, we all. Uh, just want to see one horse in this return to the track, and that is Constitution Hill at one to five currently. Brewing up a storm six to one. Goshen nine to one. For pleasure fifty to one. Uh, Utrecht is sixty six to one. Uh, obviously, uh, we uh, we saw uh, a monstrous performance at uh, at Cheltenham uh, back in March at Constitution Hill. Remarkable. They held these third run under rules that uh, that day. Obviously, we've had uh, John Bond frank that form. Mighty Potter frank that form in behind as well. Uh, and fingers crossed, he's. He's going to go through this season and be a new superstar. But, oh, I mean, if we're playing the what's Mullins going to do with his horses, <laughs> Tom, then the the Nicky, uh, Nicky Henderson tapping the barometer on the wall game is just as exciting. Yeah, I mean, it's the same old, same old, isn't it? I mean, I, 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 I totally I don't understand. I mean, the horse can't. I mean, it's not lightning fast ground by any stretch of the imagination it's perfectly good it can't ground. be any faster than it was last year in the uh, supreme did it he smashed the track record by country mile. I know. yeah <laughs> i know it can't be any faster than that uh, I, I don't understand if you pull horses out on ground that good to soft or whatever they say it is i mean if all the jockeys came in today it's, it's perfectly normal you know winter ground for these horses if you're pulling a horse out on like that and you know when you when you targeted it i don't I, I just don't understand i just don't understand and the, the problem is if he doesn't run does goshen run and then you're left with you know then you're left with three runners in a you know in a really really you know it's always a good race i mean it's so you know buzz was in brilliant in it last year i hope constitution hill runs i'd love to see him again obviously if he runs he wins uh Brewing up a storm, as the market would say, is the, the alternative. If he doesn't, I think I think he'll run. I think he'll have to run uh, because I don't see any reason not to. And so uh, he'll win. Okay. Um, if he doesn't, uh, though, are we looking at? Oh, well, this we is well, uh, brewing up a storm. Uh, 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 well, no, well, this is a, this is it, isn't it? I mean, you know, it, it is a paid gallop, isn't it? At the end of the day, brewing up a storm can't get out his own way. Yeah. Uh, for a start, you know he's going to make three mistakes going. And he only got, he didn't get as far any further than the first at Aintree last time. Gosh, and will hate the ground even more than Constitution Hill. Um, the other two need a hurdle start, don't they? Like you know, so yeah. I mean, he just turns up, he wins, he trots round. It's not like he's going to have to be put under any pressure at all. I'm sure he, I'm sure he scores on 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 ground with uh, um, with no more giving than there's going to be in t tomorrow at that time. So I just, I don't get it. No, you know, he's got to run, he's got to win. Uh, if he doesn't, it's a it's a cry and shame for the course because you know we've got you got really really small fields anyway, and you know the stars are your attractions, and if you take them out, which is perfectly plausible that it'll happen, uh, then there isn't an awful lot to go there for. Yeah, because I mean we need to be clear about this. You, I, I people talk about small fields, small fields, small fields. You don't need a big field to have a good race. The Clonmel Oil Chase was, this week was fantastic, mm. and watching John Bond jump around Warwick was fantastic as it well. It was it was it, but you need. You, you, you need the idea that it's going to be competitive, though, as well, don't you? Yeah. Like, you know, nobody's suggesting if this is a good race, everybody's disappointed at the end of it. Yeah, <laughs> if yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, because, oh dear, he's not as good as we thought he was because, you know, he shouldn't be coming off the bar. What he did last year, uh, he should win very, very easily. Yeah. 
Okay, no Constitution Hill, he's one to buy. If this was a genuinely, if it was a truly run race, would there be a trip concern or, or is it? Is Not it, in a million years, no. No? I'm just trying to find, no. trying to find some. I mean, I'm glad he's up to him in trip because I knew he should have gone for a Ballymore last year. I was telling everybody then it would, he should have done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's true because he scraped <laughs> over the Supreme. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. Yeah, 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 further he went, further clear he went. Imagine what he'd have done over two mile five. <laughs> yeah, I guess, yeah. Constitution Hills wins by 104 lengths. That uh, would, uh, would be something. But, um, but then he would have come up against the, uh, the best hurdler of last season. It's Sir Gerhard, wouldn't he, uh, Tom? <laughs> he was your yeah. favourite, wasn't he, last year? He was, he was my favourite. He ran in the wrong race too, didn't he? And he won. That was like, I, did the, yeah. I did the opposite with Keels in the Ballymore. But then yeah. if, you'd have, if you'd have run in the Supreme, you'd have, he would have got nowhere near Constitution Hill in, anyway. So. Yeah. Well, they could have put the keys in the bowl and swapped, I guess. But um, I like, yeah, they gone for the one, <laughs> gone for the other. <laughs> exactly. We would have been happy, Keels, but there we go. But um, uh, as for the uh, as for the rest, uh, G- Goshen. What is what? Which Goshen? I mean, which Goshen? How many Goshens are there? Uh, or is or is Goshen gone? I'm not no, sure. He's not gone. I'm, not, I'm not sure he's gone. I've already hated fences. Obviously, I don't. You know, he was supposed to have been lethal at home, but I, I think we know what the lethal meant now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know. So he's back over hurdles now, but he does want a bit of cut in the ground, doesn't he? Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, I don't think he ran particularly well. Did he not run particularly well in this race last year? Uh, he was horrible. No, he was, yeah. Was... So you know, I think the ground will be too fast for him. He won't like it. Okay. He wants to wait till you know he'll. You know, he'll probably end up against Constitution Hill, unfortunately, in the contender's hurdle that he won last year. Um, but he's that, he's that sort of horse. Yeah, OK. Um, has, uh, has, uh, has anyone else got anything to say at, uh, at home? <laughs> I don't think so. Ian I've Wick got says, a special. Oh, there we go. Special what? Ian Wick <laughs> says you could have gone through Ascot's guard in 10 minutes, uh, which, is, uh, which is fair enough. Cobert says it's rained all week. It has. I mean... Yeah, if this was they'll just run it, if they run it in my back garden, the Constitution Hill and Goshen will get exactly what they uh, what they want. Be, I mean, I can't believe the water in it, Ascot. I can't believe it. Where I live, and by, I'm about five minutes down the road as well. You live in where do you live? Somewhere up north. You ain't got a load of you ain't got a load of sand under your track, though, have you, uh, Tom? No, no. There used to be a road under the half of it, didn't there? Mm. Ascot. Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it, it was. It would have been. It was softer in last year's Commonwealth Cup than it's going to be in uh, this this year's Coral Earl, isn't it? But uh, you've got a special, David Stevens. Yeah, I've got to find one now, haven't I? I'm just trying to promote <laughs> some interest. Um, I can't believe we're spending so long talking about a one to five shot that we don't even know if it's going to run. But um, trip, no concern. Going, we think shouldn't be any concern. But I must admit, my heart sank when I listened to Chris Stickles being interviewed on. Sky Racing early when he said about how well it had taken the round and how quickly it was drying out. And yeah, I think we're going to have to wait until the morning or closer to race time for a decision. I just wonder how much running out to your Nicky always still regrets running out to your, of course, in the race. This meeting, this was the, the, the chase on this day, wasn't it? I hope they run him because without him, it's going to be pretty slim pickings. But if you think he's going to run and he's going to win in an absolute hat canter, we've got some winning distance betting. By over 10 lengths, 6 to 4 from evens. By over 15 lengths, 5 to 2 from 3 to 1. And by over 20 lengths, 9 to 2, now 5 to 1. There's all sorts going on, but I fear I'm losing my audience at the other end here. Sorry, David. What was Sorry, that? Your audience. Your <laughs> audience. I don't think anyone was listening in the first place, were they? Constitution Hill to win by over 10 lengths. But if he won the Supreme by 22, and he would have won the Ballymore by... By further, what are we thinking? 50? 60? Well, what's, what's, the, what's the graded record? What's the record for I, I, I distance in a graded race? I don't know. Well, it used to be a distance years ago, didn't it? And that's what I mean. Yeah. 36 from quarter of Star when they actually started giving giving lengths for, for a grade one. I think that might I think that might be it, but I wouldn't be 100% certain. Yeah. Um, he's not going to be asked to, is he? Jockey, no. jockey won't be allowed to ride him again if he starts pushing him out on ground that Nicky Henderson is worried about. So I think it'll yeah. be softy, softy. Okay, there we go. Uh, so yeah, them them boots are rubbish. <laughs> we got another one. <laughs> yes, another one of the non runners, <laughs> Long Presse and Constitution Hill to both win by over four lengths, nine to four from seven to four. But uh, yeah, both looking more likely to be non runners. This is going very well tonight, isn't it? Oh, I tell you what, I'm just I was just having I was having a lovely flashback then about drawing up t- talking about draw biases. I was thinking, you remember those? I was like, oh. 
We could talk about a draw bias or a... It's, uh, <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. I take jumps at Asco over flat at Asco every day of the week. I'm sick and tired of watching, watching my jockey decide he can't win on one side of the track and then make an absolutely certain he can't by going over to the other side. <laughs> okay, there we go. That's good. I just wanted to get the fire back under Keels there, so we've moved on uh, from the, the 240 at Ascot to the, uh, the 315 at Ascot, which will be a cracking race if Edward Stone uh, turns up and carries 12 stone. Uh, for this two mile handicap chase. Three to one favourite for Alan King's charge. Four to one, so Scottish. Time White is nine to two with Boots Hill. Seven to one, Frero Bamboo. Eleven to one, third time Lucky. Twelve to one before midnight. Amula Gold is 22 to one. Uh, I crunched a few numbers. Two mile handicap chases. Uh, 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 horses rated 160 plus over the last 15, 20 years. Seven from 33, 21% strike rate. Sayo de Grugis won three. Titaniano, Wellchief, Cadaran, Senkost. Uh, albeit, Alan King did get Voiper Ustedes beat uh, off a, of a big weight in a two mile handicap chase. Uh, got beat uh, a, a head by one of uh, Philip Hobbs, who never won again. And then Voiper Ustedes went on and won uh, a, a couple of grade twos and finished runner up in the Tingle Creek and the Champion Chase. So. Hopefully Edward Stone turns up because uh, it, arguably the, other th the two odds on shots who might not go, uh, we, we want them to turn up keels because we want them to see him canter around for another race. But this, yeah, this yeah, is going yeah, to be a proper, this is a proper race. race. And, you know, it, it, it's bold from, from Alan King to take him away from the Schler, which was, you know, you know, would have basically been a match between him and Nubi Nekwa, and, and to come under 12 stone and a handicap. Now, you know, my... Query is just how strong last year's two-mile novice form is. Mm -hmm. um, has got a boost of sorts with Blue Lord actually winning the Clonmel, but I mean, loads of the other two-year-olds, two uh, second-season novice chase, second-season chases from over two miles have all been getting beaten so far this season, beaten out of sight as well. Uh, do your job being one of them has now been beaten twice. Um, uh, third time lucky who's in here. Uh, Warlord, uh, both got thrashed in the Hall and Gold Cup. So. Can, I, can, I, can, I, can I top spin that back over to you? Go on. Um, so, Blue Lord obviously would have mm. won a grade one next time out, won a grade two. Oh, no, no, I'm talking about this season. I'm not talking about winning novice. You know, I don't care what they did last season, <laughs> still against novices. It doesn't count. They're still running against novices. They're okay. coming out into open company. All right, okay. But, so, the last two articles, when Shishkin won, put the kettle on, mm. how many horses do you think would have graded one in the next 265 days after, out of those races, apart from the winners? Well, apart from the winners, apart, apart from the winners, yes. But, I mean, they put up really, really big performances to win an article, and Edward Stone didn't. Okay. All I'm like, saying you know is I mean? that n not, there was zero. Yeah. So, what I'm saying is that. Yeah. It, 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 is the Arkle, apart from when Duvan won, and it was a, it was a, it was a fairly small but deep field. Yeah, I know. Yeah, is it not Arkle winner yeah. and yeah, well it could be, it could be, but I mean this is more to me this is more a put the kettle on than a than a shiskin. Yeah, right, and he's running twelve stone. Oh, yeah, we, you know, might be wrong. He might he might come we'll out. Put the kettle on. Win. won the champion chase next year. Uh, yeah, but she went after that, didn't she? <laughs> I can't believe you picked me up on that one. But yes. <laughs> yeah, that was a fluke. No, 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 but you know what I mean. No, <laughs> you know, she's not, uh, you know, I, I just don't, I, I'm, I'm worried about the, 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 the novices from last year. Anyway, yeah. I thought it was a weak division then. He, he would have been one of the lower rated hurdlers to win an article. But we shall, we shall see. He's his favourite. I mean, you know, he's every right to be on, on, on what he did last year, I suppose. And we've got an interesting one of Emmett Mullins. So he's got so Scottish. I mean, did he run um, last week's as a smokescreen? Because this one's suddenly being backed. Yeah. Uh, and has form, but as opposed to Thousand Tears having none whatsoever to suggest he could possibly win a Greatwood. So Scottish has um, won very easily. Um, both chase starts. And is quite, is quite interesting. Off a low weight... I backed Ferrero Bamboo earlier in the week because I thought he travelled a lot better um, than was the case a lot of the time last year. Just didn't get home. Now, he's obviously had that run for Venetian. I was going to say, if they all need that first run. Uh, I was hoping for a bit of softer ground, though, because I think that's what he needed, and it's dried out a bit. And I just, I'm going to have another go with Before Midnight, who was third um, last time behind um, Time White and Ferrero Bamboo, but he got taken off. He did loads wrong. Belted the first, he got badly umpered at the second, he, he didn't jump that well afterwards. And he won this race last year because he got an easy lead. And like I said, there was a, there was a bit of a pace battle last time. And the only one potentially to take him on here is Kill Teeley Briggs, who was normally racing over three mile yeah. or a lot further than two miles. So I think he might get it more his own way this time. Yeah. And I, I mean, thought, they, they got racing a long way out. Yeah, last exactly. Time. Yeah. And I thought at an each way price, he might go quite well. Yeah. Okay, uh, there's a couple against potentially the favourite. Uh, the one we must mention, which we haven't yet, is, is Boots Hill, uh, Tom, who uh, uh, obviously has been coming up against some uh, some nice types over uh, over hurdles. And again, he's 
quite the opposite to the horse earlier we mentioned about how you you watch it in the home straight and you wonder how it got beat three and a quarter lengths. You look at Boot Hill and you wonder how it won by three and a quarter lengths because I think Jonathan Burke started easing him up at the second circuit at, uh, at Newton Abbott. But uh, absolutely hacked up. Uh, but um, Edward Stone, if he runs, where are you sitting with him? I, was, I'm, I love Edward Stone. I thought he was, I just think he jumps so well. I'm a, I'm a big fan of his. I get what Keel says about the form. I thought Gabby Anarco was actually running very well in the Galway plate. I'm, I'm not totally convinced they were as bad as as Keel said, uh, when he fell at the last. Uh, so, uh, I mean, I, 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 if you're not going to run at, at Cheltenham last week, you're not going to run in off top weight in a, in a race like this, I wouldn't have thought. So I, I can't see Edward Stone running, really. Hope he does, because I'd love to see him. I think he's a great jumper, and I think he'd probably win, actually. I think, I think, I think, he's, I think he's a different class to these, if, if truth be told. Uh, the danger, I think, was Time White, because I was really impressed with him last time. I remember speaking to Paul Nichols before, the grand annual last year and he, he couldn't stop telling me how what the time white was going to be a really good horse and now he's you know he's got a great chance in the grand annual and everything was you know and it, it, it obviously last season never sort of happened for him but he came back looking a totally different horse i thought last time and i know he's gone up in the weights but i think the ground will suit him i don't think it'll be a problem for him at all so uh <laughs> they would be my two i think i'm i'm a big fan of Ferrero Bamboo but I can't see him on this ground over two miles anymore uh, he'll, he'll just see, I know he travelled better last time but surely he needs two and a half nearly probably three in time if he can win on, on this ground against these top horses I'd be surprised Boot Hill has to just jump better I know he was a little bit better at Newton Abbott it was a Mickey Mouse race wasn't it he's going to have to jump better than he did as a novice don't know anything about so Scottish just think all his all those horses are way too short a price uh, third time lucky doesn't finish his races but before midnight's a good jumper and likes it here uh, but I think Tom White will be right up his uh, right close by him. So <laughs> nearly, nearly swore there. I think I thought he'd be. Uh, he, I thought he. I don't. Think he, I don't think Tom White would, uh, will, will let him have it easy up front. Amula Gold will get too far back. So I think if Edward Stone runs, he wins. If he doesn't, Tom White does. Thank you, Tom. Need to stay off the of Hennessy, I think, but uh, yeah. the uh, or the Jim Barry wines potentially. Uh, the uh, David Stevens. Uh, a, a really interesting handicap chase uh, on uh, on paper. Fingers crossed it uh, turns out that way. Yeah, I want to say three places each way as things stand for the first time tonight, but uh, may not be the case. Look, like we've been saying with all these horses, let's just hope Edwardston lines up because to see a, a grade one winner carry top way in a handicap is, is just yeah, what we want to see. It, it is something different. But say if the ground wasn't uh, slow enough at Cheltenham last week, got to be a question mark. Love him if he were to run. But if he doesn't, I like Boot Hill. Uh, yeah, get the point that his jumping's got to improve, but he couldn't have won any easier at Newton Abbott, hoping there's still plenty more to come from him. So Scott Scottish is being backed 4-1, to one, the shortest he's ever been for this race. We just don't know, do we, about the Emmett Mullins Rollins? But we're giving them plenty of respect. But, yeah, Boot Hill for me. Let's hope Edwardson stays in and makes it uh, three places each way. Lovely stuff. OK, that uh, brings our Ascot preview uh, to an end as we go to, to Haydock for three races. Let's have a look at uh, what we've got, uh, starting off with a, a cracking handicap hurdle, three miles the distance. We've had some good winners of this uh, in the, the past uh, few years, past 15 years really, but Paisley Park and obviously uh, Sam Spinner and uh, David Pipes won this with some very nice types. So soft ground, three miles, Haydock, uh, handicap hurdle. This is going to be a real old test. Uh, my tie... Might well uh, think this is a uh, an absolute walk in the park, though, because there's no Constitution Hill, no John Bond, no Three Stripe Life. He's seven or two for this uh, handicap debut. Four to one run for Oscar. Good risk at all is nine to two. Complete unknown eight to one. Brinkley for the aforementioned Pipe team who like this race is seventeen to two. Ten to one get a tonic. Ailey Rose is tens, and it is fourteen to one and bigger the rest. A three mile uh, handicap hurled around at Haydock with a seven or two favourite and lots of interest in form. Uh, is surely, surely Keels is going to come alive for this. Yeah, I love it, Bayer. You know, I have back two. One of them is the Fav. Um, yep. I think he's the one in the race that, with the potential to blow it apart. Um, obviously, you do see some very, very good horses win this. Sam Spinner won it a few years ago, didn't mm -hmm. he, if you remember? Then went on to, uh, to win the long walk. And I just wonder whether my eye could be a proper graded horse at three miles. I mean, you know, he was so impressive first time out. He looked like a real good horse uh, when he went on his debut. And then he runs into Constitution Hill, gets thrashed. No disgrace there. Runs into John Bond, gets beat just under five lengths. No disgrace there. Steps up in trip and proves again running second to three stripe life. He's a half brother of Statler who won the National Hunt Chase. He likes soft ground. Everything about him says he's going to appreciate a trip. Um, except 
but he can sometimes be keen, which <laughs> can obviously mitigate against you getting a trip. But yeah. by the same token, I just think as he as he grows up, he's got Steyer written all over him, and you know he ought to be winning a race like this off a of mile around of forty two. To potentially um, a to, unit, to be a, I mean, a graded horse, for, yeah. For the, for the connection, you can see him potentially. Yeah, I can. Oh, yeah, I can see him progressing into a proper graded stay in hurdler. Yeah, and I'm not 100 percent sure I can see that about the others. The other one I back is get a tonic. Uh, just because you know, literally Dan Skelton, who likes this race, he won it with Baradari. He had Riggs as second, second last year, mm. uh, and he said he's had this race in mind for get a tonic for a long while, and she improved a little bit when she stepped up to three mile last year. He said. Um, in his stable tour, that he thinks you know, he expects her to be taking on the bet the better mares later in the season. So again, she's got a mark of 133. If she's going to be taking on really good mares later in the season, especially the Irish, she's got to be better than that. So there'd be my two. It is very very open. Again, we've got an Irish horse with serious claims. We've got the Says winner for in run for Oscar. Yeah. Uh, not 100% certain with him on soft ground. Well, of course, we do not yet know how soft it is. That is true, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, well... I mean, the thing is, it's been lashing down all week. Um, we've been hearing from people who live close to say, you know, this will be abandoned, it'll be Haydock heavy and all that. Kirkland Terrell White comes up and says, well, actually, we missed the worst of it. Yeah. Uh, and we've had eight, you know, we had eight mil yesterday. Now, you know, uh, you, you never get any clue from the going stick at Haydock. No. Um, it was... But it's 4.7 on Thursday. They didn't give a reading um, today. Um, it was The last time it was below that was 4.9 in February when they had an inspection uh, and it was heavy. Uh, but at this meeting last year it was 4.9 and they called it good to soft and every time expert around will tell you that it was faster than that. So who knows? Uh, we'll have to wait and see. Keep an eye on the times in the early races and how they finish and what you think. Uh, I'm guessing, I'm hoping it'll be, I'm personally hoping it'll be very, very soft. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, that'd be the question for me with Ron Frosca. Okay, uh, Ron Frosca is a four to one shot though. Uh, currently, Mai Tai is a seven to two. He beat Thunder Rock, didn't he? That novice hurdle last year on his first start over obstacles, uh, who bolted up off one four two over fences today. So potentially very well handicapped. But uh, I quite like the look of Brinkley here, uh, uh, Tom. Uh, David Pipes had a, a very good start to the season. Uh, David Pipe off the back of a two hundred day break. Uh, in the past couple of months, five winners from 16, City Ismail, Ramses, the Teo, uh, and the horse that this horse reminds me the most of, Remastered, who bolted up at Aintree uh, only a couple of weeks ago. I thought he could go well. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you on Brinkley. I've tipped Brinkley tomorrow. I thought everything, as you say, there is spot on for him. David Pipe in the race, uh, soft ground, three miles, stays forever. Actually ran off a £10 higher mark in the Per Temps final. Uh, two seasons ago and he was actually in front two out and going as well as anything turning for home ground was way too quick he's 10 pounds lower here so he's got a chance i agree with keels entirely about my tie he could be totally different class to these he literally could blow the race apart but you know certain member of your studio there who's off to a wedding in about five minutes uh has spoiled it for everyone <laughs> who spoiled it for everyone it's now seven to two when it was about you know, eight or nine to one in the week so uh uh, you know, seven to two could be bottomless ground. Do I want to back him at that? Probably not. I'd prefer to take a much bigger price about Brinkley. I do think Good Risk at all is a very interesting horse. You know, I know Keels is saying that Mai Tai is the only one that could get to the top. Good Risk at all is good. When he won his bumper, he beat I Like to Move It. He beat Jolino Bello. He beat Mai Tai, was in the race. You know, and he won it by miles. Yeah, I do like him, Tom, but he's just going to land on all fours at least once, isn't he? He might well do. He might well That's do. His jumping's not brilliant, is it? But he's a very, very good horse. Uh, my personal worry about him is he can be quite keen, and whether he'll properly stay. If it's a if it's a Haydock mud fest, which is what I'm hoping it will be, then any you know, then you get out front. And it's hard to make up. You know, any of these. You know, the the, the ones that you know, my tie and good risk at all. have got to prove they stay. They haven't done it yet. So uh, I'd be, you know, that's the reason why I'm taking them on run for Oscar. All Charles Burns has ever said is it wants good, is he wants good ground. It's definitely good ground in the Cesarich. Will he, you know, if it's the mud bath that I'm hoping, then I don't worry about him. The other one I, I thought is is the other Irish horse right down the bottom with Ben Bromley claiming seven. Uh, Ailey Rose, she's very consistent. She ran really well behind Good Risk at all at Carlisle the other day. That would definitely have been a warm up for this. Stuart Crawford wouldn't be, wouldn't be going to. Carla, you know, wouldn't have entered her for this off a, off a low weight without having it as the plan. She is going to be £13 better off if you take Brom Bromley's uh, uh, claim into account and 
don't forget she ran into some good horses last year she she gave for uh, hollow games a bit of a race and she gave jerry colom who won in the week of uh, who looked a brilliant novice she's unbeaten and she was second to him with miles back to the rest just off the bottom off 10 stone if it got really soft i could see her go see her going well i see she's 10 to 1 now and she was what 33 25 so you know a couple of days ago so so I think everyone's cottoned on to her. But uh, I think she'll go well. Those were my two, Brinkley and her. I am very scared of my tie because it because has, has and good risk at all. They could be really top-class horses, the pair of them. And they're both proven on heavy ground, soft ground as well. So if they stay, they could they, they, they could be the ones. But uh, Brinkley's pretty good horse. He looked pretty good when he won his two heavy ground races uh, two years ago in 2021. And uh, I think he'll go well for the Pike team. And Ailey Rose would be my other one. There we go. There we uh, go. You got a cracking handicap hurdle then, David Stevens. Uh, yeah, a bit of money around for a few here. Yes, uh, prompted by the two gentlemen with us here tonight. Might I backed, as Thomas said, thanks to Paul, and Brinkley backed. Thanks to Tom. Tom Scudmore, of course, writes, rides Brinkley and speaking in his Coral blog, he says, yeah, look, he could be thrown in a bit on some of his best form. He is a bit inconsistent, but I get the centre. There is plenty of confidence here. He goes well, fresh enough. I like good risk at all. Two and a half miles of Carlisle heavy ground last time gives hope that you'll see out an extra half a mile here. Uh, but we are four places each way. Never thought I'd be saying that on tonight's show, but we'd have the extra place each way. So uh, run for Oscar, of course, is the one we just don't know about. Charles Burns, as I say, he shouldn't run him on what he said about the ground. But if he lines up, uh, he's bound to be of interest to plenty. He is indeed. Cracking handicap hurdle then at Haydock for that 225 contest. Uh, and then we've got grade one action, of course, uh, at, uh, at three o'clock. Again, another small field, but uh, in theory, they, they all should be there. Uh, Aplutard is four to six. Uh, Protector at 11 to four. Bristol Demise, seven to one. Eldorado Allen, 20 to one. Frodon uh, is a 25 to one shot. And when Frodon is a 25 to one shot, you know there's some good horses uh, in the mix, even though he is, of course, uh, 10 years old now. Uh, and Aplutard absolutely took this race to bits last season. On that form, uh, he's practically unbeatable in this. Uh, uh, of course, he also uh, was uh, uh, imperious at Cheltenham as well. So if, uh, if that Aplutard turns up, uh, or the Haydock Aplutard turns up, obviously he's going to bolt up here. If the Leperstown Aplutard turns up, he might well be uh, beatable, Tom. Uh, but, um, of course, he's surely going to be ready and raring to go for, uh, for this race. And arguably a weaker contest than last year's Betfair chase? Yeah, about the same, isn't it? I mean, Protector and Bristol Demire are pretty good horses. Elder Art, they're all, look, Frodon's King George winner. So I think it's pretty similar. Uh, it just depends on his jumping, doesn't it? When <coughs> uh, jumps well, he's unbeatable. When he's a bit sloppy, like he was at Leopardstown, or like he was when he didn't win the Ryanair, unlike he was when he got beaten by Manila Indo, he can be a bit sloppy at some fences. When he does that, he's perfectly beatable. Uh, Will he, you know, will any, will anything, you know, Bristol to mile go a good gallop, won't he? And Frodon's in there. So just depend on his jumping. I think I, he's the, I think he's the best chaser in training by quite some distance. And I hope he wins by miles because uh, I, I love the horse and always have done ever since he won that novice uh, handicap at the Cheltenham Festival. Uh, he's brilliant. If he jumps, he'll win easily. Uh, if he doesn't, Protector out and Bristol Demai are dangers. Bristol Demai is going for, for a quarto star, isn't he? He's going for his fourth win in the race. I know he's 11 now, but if it's a, if it's a proper old Haydock slog, he, he's a chance. And I think Protector out, this is his gold cup. I think Dan Skelton said it. He's got him spot on for this. When he won at Aintree last year, the ground was completely bottomless. I think he stays all day. Uh, he's got no... You know, he's just not got the Bristol Demai Haydock factor, so or the Aplutard Haydock factor just yet. So... Look, I'm hoping Aplutard wins. Uh, takes your money, pays your choice on the other ones. I just slightly prefer Protector at to Bristol to May because of their age thing. Yeah, Protector is a 11 of four shots. Uh, and uh, like a lot of Dan Skelton's um, horses of this uh, this quality, again, they, they have a, a occasional glimmers of, wow, he's got a real uh, flag bearer here. Uh, and then occasionally they don't, they don't quite run up to uh, to scratch. Yeah, Danny let you down. I mean, he ran really well in the Gold Cup, he didn't, he? didn't um, he? Yeah. You know, I mean, the only thing about that Aintree race, it just fell apart very quickly, yeah. didn't it? And that was the only worry me. And the, the, the runner-up, Native River, was retired after the after the Welsh National afterwards. So, you know, I wouldn't be, you know, he does handle he does handle soft ground, obviously. But I think his better run was in the was in the Gold Cup to, yeah. for me. And it was, you know, it shows how much he's got to make up. Now, you know, for me, this entirely depends on the ground and how sticky it is. And I think the thing with Aplutide, like Tom mentioned about his jumping, it's not the case of not staying. It's a case of jumping out of soft ground, and he has yet to win 
a three mile chase when the ground has been soft. Mm. And you know, don't you know he did win? Um, he won the Savills a couple of years ago when, you know, plenty of time, time men were saying that it was soft ground. But he was also traded at 150 and running in that race before just getting up uh, to beat Galbing. So you know, he's got questions to answer. But if the you know if you watch the first few races, you think actually this isn't bad. That four or six becomes one to four very quickly. You yeah. know what I mean? Because he's a very very you know he's an exceptional horse. He's got an official rating of 180. Uh, that you know, that's my benchmark for a true absolute superstar. Yeah. He's only the eighth horse, and since two thousand and nine, to carry a BHA rating into a race in Britain, like you know what I mean. So it doesn't happen very often, and you see all these horses that we've seen be called superstars over there. You know, to me, they're not until they reach that mark. Yeah. That's the true measure, uh, and he's there. So you know, he's definitely and not the just horse on to one beat. performance, and not either. just on one performance. No, not just on one performance because he absolutely destroyed him in this race last year. And to see him sprint clear of, of that field in the Gold Cup was amazing because he, mm. he actually looked like he was in trouble two out. Yeah, and then he and then he, then he took off. So he's very very good. And again, he's a bit like Corto Star, and he had all that two mile pace. I mean, he's beat you know, like I said soft tough ground isn't actually a problem. He's beaten Shaq and Persoir on soft ground in a Grade One. Um, I think he'll win, but I'm also knee deep in Bristol Demai, who I've been backing at big prices for the last couple of weeks. Um, each way, first two places, because you know I think a horse with his record round there on soft ground um, should, be, should be shorter than he is. I expect he'll beat Big Protectorat because he'll get in a rhythm. Yeah. Uh, Protectorat can belt one as well every now and again. He did so first time out last season, uh, and I think he's he's going to be the one. For me, he's the most one most likely to follow him home because he just runs his race. He's run he's run five times, I think, on soft or heavy ground at at, at uh, Haydock, and he's won all bar last year's Grand National trial when he traded at twenty five to one on him running halfway up the straight, but just didn't quite stay. There's only two horses that have got within about twenty lengths with him when the ground's been soft there. Yeah. So he's you know he's you know for me he's going to be just as much a protector. He's going to be absolutely revved up for this race. We know he loves it. We can trust him to jump well down there. So I think he'll follow Aplutar home. I'll be delighted if Aplutar goes and shows on what he's an absolute superstar and wins, but I'll actually be even more de delighted if Bristol nuts him. OK, there you go. So it's a win-win situation then for you in a, in a, in a fashion. Uh, but uh, yeah, Aplutar 4-6, to six, protector 11-4, Bristol the Mice 7-1, Eldorado Allen, who'll be hunting round for a... Uh, another group one place, I'm sure, uh, and Frodon at 25 to 1, David. Betfair Chase, the winner for you? Uh, look, Aplutard, clearly the most likely winner. Four to six could be a big price. He was two to seven not that long ago, earlier in the week. I say, if the ground isn't desperate, that four to six obviously won't last. Kills, just a quick question. Bristol to May, you're not worried about it being pulled up in the race last year? You put that purely down yeah, to but that the, was, the ground? Yeah, but the ground, was, the ground was much faster than good to soft. I mean, hopefully it's going to be much, much softer. When the ground's really soft, you know, he's not entirely, he's not entirely bomb-proof, but he's an exceptionally good horse when the ground is really soft around there. There you go. That's yeah. your answer. Absolutely. Yeah, I've just, it's just the image of Kills being knee deep, deep in Bristol to Mai that I find <laughs> slightly unsettling. But, yeah, look, I, I hope Aplutar wins. I'm not quite sure why or how he's not favourite for next year's Gold Cup. He's 72 second favourite. Galapan de Champ is his favourite. Um, yeah, I hope Aplutar can go out tomorrow. As you said, at least one of these superstar chasers is on target. There's no questions over the ground for him. Well, I hope there isn't. Yeah. Um, uh, Aplutar, four to six then for the Bet Fair Chase tomorrow uh, at, uh, at Haydock. Uh, quickly rattled through the last then. Uh, a handicap chase over an extended three miles and one furlong. Uh, Houston, Texas, three to one. Fontaine, Collange, fives. Lord of Manial, five to one. Good boy, Bobby, sixes. Truckers Lodge, sevens. Musical Slave, turns with the big breakaway and 16 to one. Bar those, again, depending on how the, uh, the ground is, uh, if it is very soft, uh, this is going to be brutal. Uh, and uh, you might get three or four finishing because uh, mainly because you make one single mistake in these kind of races in soft ground at Haydock and you find yourself 20 lengths behind the uh, the uh, the leaders. But uh, in a, a sentence or less, Keels, what do you think of this? Uh, yeah, if it wasn't for Nisha and Williams not having any winners, I'd make Fontaine Collins a better weekend, but I'm still backing her anyway. Uh, she'd buy Sadler Maker, same size as uh, Bristol de Mai, who has uh, not had many runners at Haydock. Also had Chef des Obo, who won a... Won a 15 lengths, I think it was, in a grade two novice hurdle on heavy ground. She's won both her starts on heavy ground. The last one was over two and a half mile. The dam's a sister to Neptune Collons. Everything everything about her says, stayer. The question is the stable form, but I've had a crack anyway. OK, there you go. I mean, you could probably... It'll travel. You can lay it back, at least, I guess. But uh, Fonte Collons, five to one then. Tom? Yeah, uh... 
We're only missing the Dallas Cowboys, aren't we? We've had the Houston Texas and the old Arizona Cardinals. We need the <laughs> Dallas Cowboys and the San Francisco 49ers. And we got the Yankee up, haven't we? But uh, Fontaine Collage, I agree with Kiels. I think he's she is the one with the potential to be a lot better than a handicap mark. Uh, I'm just worried that, you know, three miles, one furlong, heavy ground with with uh, in, uh, with Venetia Williams at the moment. You know, I'll probably go and see a bolt up and be really cross myself for not backing. I've actually had a few quid on Truckers Lodge, the old boy. I know people think that uh, he uh, needs his first run, but I'm not convinced. Every time he runs first time out, it tends to be on good ground. He's very, very well handicapped on his old form. He's got uh, Freddie Gingell taking off £10 because he's Paul Nichols' is conditional. He's getting weight from all of these nearly now. Uh, and last year he was third in the uh, Welsh National. He was also third in a good race over three miles at Ascot. Similar race to this. Uh, I think he'll go well if he's fit. I, I, I don't know if he is, but I expect him to be. And I think he'll run well, Truckers Lodge. Okay, Truckers Lodge is a seven to one shot. And uh, you've got 10 words to wrap this race up, David. We have an extra place each way, so playing four places each way. And with the doubts over the Venetia Williams runners, I'm going to go with Houston, Texas. Jumped well, unexposed, won't mind the ground, won't mind the trip. And with a winner for Nicky Richards. Okay, that was uh, some, somewhere around 10 anyway, wasn't it? Uh, Houston, Texas, 3-1 <laughs> to one favourite, Friday at 3.35 at Haydock tomorrow then. That wraps up our Saturday preview, because I think it's across they actually all... Uh, go who uh, who are supposed to go and we should have some nice horses uh, to to get stuck into uh, but uh, I, before we go we've got to get the naps so uh, best bets of the day on Saturday starting off Mr Paul Keeley uh, well I've napped Fontaine Colonge in the paper but I actually think sizing Potsy could be the better I can't understand one's not favourite uh, for the novice hurdle at Haydock uh, grade 2 chase winner you know what I remember uh, uh, David Pipe did with Ramsey's to tie when you yep. put him back over and just kept kept going out and winning. I mean, this was, a, you know, one of grade two chase that never, never done this running against horses only just starting out their careers to win. There you go. <laughs> Tom? Uh, <laughs> I'll take a chance on Brinkley, hoping the ground's really, really soft at Haydock and that uh, I know we'll stay. Uh, I know the pipe team love the race, so I'll go for Brinkley in the stairs race at Haydock. All right, and uh, I don't normally do this, but it's literally the only horse I'm going to back tomorrow is Brinkley, Tom, so I agree 100% with you. All right, so double nap <laughs> on Brinkley. David Stevens. Uh, good, sorry, sizing Potsy is 5-2 to two in that opener at Haydock for kills. I'm going to go for good risk at all in the 225 at Haydock. Wonderful stuff. Uh, guys, uh, thank you ever so much. Uh, hopefully tomorrow is uh, an exciting Saturday afternoon. Uh, we'll see you back for more of the same next week. Uh, thanks to Paul, David and Tom and everyone for watching at home. Good night.